Hello friends, welcome back. I am Rajnesh and today we are going to discuss some fundamentals of Samba for Server. Samba team has worked a lot on bringing up such a stable product which is compatible with Microsoft Active Directory and which is actually a replica of Microsoft Windows Active Directory. So let's have a look into the feature. First thing, it is compatible with Active Directory Domain Controller. It has the ability to sync itself from the AD. It has the ability to behave as a standalone domain controller or as an additional domain controller. The main feature that if we are talking about Active Directory is the provision of domain logons and group policies and some of our support them. So it supports AD logon from Windows XP, Windows 7 and Mac OS. And if you want to manage this application Samba 4, you can manage it through the management tools or remote server admin tools that are available for Windows XP and Windows 7. Full support for group policy definition. Group policy means you can define a group or a site or a set of computers that will be attached to this particular group policy. Group policy says that uh, whether what should be the status of the desktop. He should be able to access control panel or not. He should be uh, able to install packages or not. And additionally there are a lot of group policy definitions but uh, we'll have a look into all of them. Uh, we can say a few of them because there are a huge number of group policies. We'll have a look into in them when we'll be working on lab. It has full NTFS semantic for shared backends. Okay, if we are talking about any domain controller, we uh, in the last session we installed identity policy and accounting IPA which was a domain controller for Linux environment. Windows machines cannot authenticate against it or additionally more precisely the iPad don't support group policies and in case you want to support domain logon you have to interact in IPA you'll have to use Samba with it right now IPA does not support Windows login so it's IPA is a domain controller for Linux environment. So if we are talking about domain controller we have one Kerberos server that is used for authentication protocol. We should have some kind of database which stores username and password. So it has the internal LDAP server which has the details of the users and the attributes associated with them. The second part is Kerberos which will be used which will be used for authenticating these uh, clients so passwords will never be sent over the network and additionally if we are talking about this environment we should have some kind of DNS server that should be able to resolve the names additionally we should have an NTP server because if we are talking about any environment that has Kerberos installed in it and the SKU is greater than 5 minutes then the clients will not be able to log in into it. So it's very important that we should have an NTP server in that environment. Okay, so how are all these configurations saved on Samba 4? They all are stored in LDB format which is LDAP like database. Support for management. So how do we manage it? If we are talking about the management of uh, Samba for using Samba tools, Samba by default provides Samba tools. So which is a console based command that can be used to manage these policies but it becomes very difficult if we are talking about a huge environment so the best option is we can install windows remote server admin tools that can be installed on windows xp or windows 7 additionally it can be managed by samba tool 
to do generic activities like user ad, group ad, checking out uh, directory replication services and some basic things but if you are talking about day-to-day -day maintenance or addition of users or groups that should definitely be done or that should be done through the GUI using remote server admin tools and specifically group policy definitions so it's best if you manage them from the Windows machine requirements so if you are talking about Samba 4 it has some basic requirements it is suggested that the version of the name server or bind should be 9.8.0 or greater than it the reason being it should support dynamically loadable zones so what are dynamically loadable zones or DLZ okay forget about DLZ let's talk about the DNS server that we have been working till now it has the configuration file corresponding to the zones which are present in the plain text file as we created in the DNS environment or DNS setup so it was a plain text file which was name dot look uh, name dot labs which had the entry in the plain text and after we modify anything in a zone we reload the zone so the DNS update is available to everyone and uh, there are two options either you reload it or you restart it if you are talking about a big environment in which you have a lot of zones so restarting of the DNS service could even take a lot of time depending upon the number of zones and reloading also takes some time if you are talking so this was what we were talking then when dynamically loadable zo uh, zone was not there so let's come on to DLZ here instead of saving the zones in plain text file we are saving the zones in some database so these DNS services configurations can be loadable on the fly you are not required to restart the DNS service so that's the main benefit of it and this is present after 9.8.0 so it is suggested to use the version greater than 9.8.0 NTP server so time is very critical even in case you are entering the right credential and the timestamp difference between the server and the client where you, where you are trying to log in is greater than five minutes you will not be able to log in into the client so NTP server should be installed on it and if you are talking about NTP server it should have SNTP support SNTP stands for signed NTP support so your NTP server should be able to send the signed NTP replies to the clients most of the windows uh, new version of windows have the requirement that ntp server should provide the signed ntp replies so okay now coming on to samba 4 server what should be the requirement at the kernel end the kernel should support extended attributes security and POSIX ACL for EXT file system if we are talking about uh, extended attributes it means we are attaching some additional attributes to a particular files which are not provided by the file system okay let's consider a scenario when we have a particular file what all are the attributes that can be attached to it there should be some user some group some kind of permissions then the size is there and these are the features that extended file system provides by default if we are talking about ACLs ACLs means we are able to attach access control lists for example extended file system provides that any file can have a single owner and a single group and all others will be considered as others and the permissions uh, are provided on the basis of these using the ACL set ATTR you can 
assign the same file to multiple owners for example you have uh, three users a b and c using set a f a c l you can assign a definite permission to a particular user or to multiple users by setting them the secondary owners of the file okay so the same happens for extended attributes that will be required by samba4 and if you are trying to mount this file system we should set the barrier to 1 the reason being first of all the underlying file system should be journaled so that the probability of the corruption of the file system is reduced a lot even in case the system crashes because the file system or the data is going to be very critical on it okay journaling means it keeps a track of the modifications that are being done to the files so even in case the system crashes in between all the files that were not written to the hard disk may be written or they uh, it, they could be rolled back commit means the file okay uh, the operating system says commit means I have written to the hard disk if we are talking about the newer hard disks they have more of the cache and if the operating system says I have written it to the hard disk it doesn't mean that you have actually written to the hard disk it could be present in the cache of that hard disk and effectively in case the light goes at that particular instance of time the data is not actually written to the hard disk but the operating system journal says it was written to the hard disk and finally it could lead to some consistent inconsistent state so setting the barrier equal to one degrades the performance to some extent but it makes sure that the data from the cache of the hard disk is also written to the actual hard disk and the probability of getting inconsistency in the data will be reduced a lot and we will have consistent data even after the crash okay this uh, was the generic details about Samba 4 now coming on to the lab the first thing that needs to be done is we have installed Ubuntu 12.4 the reason I didn't use RHEL or CentOS was that we don't yet have an RPM for that and compiling could be done but uh, it would again be time consuming and if we are talking about uh, Ubuntu 12.4 it has the dev package which is available for that you will be required to add these two files in apt sources dot list okay lab setup fine okay so this was the extended attributes that I was uh, talking about okay now coming on to the lab this is DC1 on which we will be installing Samba 4 and this is Windows XP client which will be authenticating against this Samba 4 server okay first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that the IP addresses assigned to this machine should be static there is one service network manager okay in server edition this is not present that is good so network manager in case is present on your desktop or laptop it should be disabled and we can manage the networking using the file slash etc network interfaces etc network and interfaces this is the file that stores the information about the network interfaces present on an Ubuntu or Debian machine 
so this is the format auto eth0 means as soon as the machine is up eth0 interface should be brought up inet static means it should be assigned static ip address here is the address netmask and gateway so make sure that you are assigning a static ip address to this machine fine second thing that we have to do is in the ept of etc apt sources dot list dot d i created a file sama for dot list with the two entries that i specified in that ppt so this is the ppa repository that we will be using to fetch the sama for package from so i just quit it this was the file created so first thing after i have done it is yum install samba4 oh sorry i forgot that i am presently working on ubuntu 12.4 rather than centos or red hat so it will be apt get install samba4 so it says uh, the following extra packages will be installed which is bind9 so that is fine warning it's fine because we added it from a ppa public pri uh, sorry uh, private package archives we added ppa because the ubuntu repository doesn't have the uh, stable version of samba as of now it may take some more time okay so samba4 has been installed fine and it's started running let's just stop it service samba4 stop okay it's actually stopped grep minus i samba it's not running slash etc in it dot d bind 9 status stop it okay and okay samba4 has been installed now the next step is to provision the domain means samba4 has been installed but we are not yet aware of the domain or the domain has not yet been configured so our objective is to create a domain or a realm corresponding to it which is going to be uh, we can say it uh, adlabs.local so it will be samba tool domain provision use rfc 2307 i used it because i'll be using the posix schema also the plan is to allow the linux users as well as the windows users to be able to log in using this domain controller so that's the reason i am using rfc 2307 domain provision is the thing that is required because we are configuring the new samba for instance minus minus interactive means it is going to ask me for the details before that make sure that the file slash etc samba smb.conf should not be present we can just remove it samba tool provision okay so no name server is found in etc resolve.com which is not good name server 192.168.1.211 what's my ip address 
192.168.1.211 okay and the second DNS server corresponding to our network infrastructure is 205 fine okay now let's try to provision it what should be the name of the realm I would I am using a different realm adlabs.local because if we are talking about our IPA environment that is already using labs.local and in case there is any client that is using both of these DNS server so it will be a kind of confusion that which server is going to serve as a directory server for this domain for example if we are talking about labs.local and it's present both on the Samba server and IPA server and there is a client Linux client which tries to log in using this Kerberos credentials this resolution or resolution from this DNS server will say the Kerberos server is present on Samba server and from IPA it will say that Kerberos server for labs.local is present on IPA server so it will be a kind of confusion to prevent that I am creating a different domain for this one and it will be AD sorry adlabs.local domain uh, it's actually the name before the username that will be provided to you when you are trying to log in into this machine so domain adlabs is fine and the server role we want to make it a domain controller so DC is fine DNS backend Samba's internal works fine for us DNS forwarder so 192.168.1.211 is fine admin password ad admin at 123 ad admin at 123 so it's now setting up the databases for it so it has been pretty easier as compared to what we used to do in the previous Samba version it was really difficult to get it set up so right now it has been very easy if you want to keep a copy of what actually was done just copy it and save it in root as any file so here was the information the server rule is AD host name is DC1 and net BIOS name will be AD labs and DNS domain will be AD labs dot local okay so we are done with it now etc init the D named oh sorry samba for status it stopped we can just start it service samba4 start and it started with the process id 1905 okay what's the status of bind because this is very crucial part okay net stat minus p and t l drep 53 so here we can see that there is some process 1919 which is already listening to the port 53 and which is corresponding to Samba so here you can see that the Samba is using the internal DNS server so we don't want bind service if you want you can remove that otherwise it's at least required to be disabled update rc.d is the command that can be used to add or remove a service minus n to test it minus f bind 9 remove okay fine so let's remove it 
service bind 9 will not be restarted after boot and let's make sure that samba 4 will be started at boot yes samba 4 will be managed by upstart and it will be made available at the reboot fine so let's make sure that all the required services are running the most important is dns nslookup adlabs.local 192.168.1.211 it's working fine what about the service records Kerberos TCP hmm should be resolved okay the reason is minus type equal to SRV because this is a service record so it's resolved by the server 211 which is this DC1 server so the resolution is working fine and it's listening on port it should listen on port 88 on this server and this server it should be able to resolve yes resolution is fine so service record should be present for UDP also so first thing DNS server is working fine the second part is Kerberos server telnet or netstat minus P N for numeric, T for TCP, L for listening, grep88. So, Samba is also listening on Kerberos, so authentication should be fine. Now, we are talking about directory server. Is it listening on 389, which is the plain LDAP protocol, and 636? So LDAP server which is providing username and password is also working fine. Minus P and TL for TCP grab Samba. So here you can see a list of ports that Samba is listening to. 53 DNS 88 Kerberos LDAPs LDAP and for others I'm not yet sure so it seems to be working fine and the other most important thing is NTP service NTP I think is not yet installed so in Ubuntu we can install it using apt-get install NTPD sorry it's NTP and the important thing that we will have to look into the NTP's configuration is of the presence of this socket that it will be using this is actually created by Samba and it has to make use of it and by default it allows Microsoft signed NTP protocol so these are the two files which will not be present in your case and you will be required to add them at the end in ntp.conf yeah so socket is present slash etc init.d ntp start so chk config is not there slash etc rc2.d and grep ntp it shows you that it will be started at boot so all the services look fine to me what's the status of the IP tables so IP tables is not yet implemented in it 
I think uh, we already had a general discussion about IP tables so that can be done later by default Ubuntu doesn't provide IP tables so I didn't touch them now the next objective is how do we log in into or how do we add this Windows XP machine to authenticate against the domain controller DC1 okay now let's configure this Windows XP machine so that I am able to log in into this machine using the credentials that are present in the domain controller DC1 so first of all let me hit control alt Dell and let me add admin at one two three which is the credential of the local administration administrator on this machine now to make it a part of the domain edlabs.local I just right click on my computer and properties computer name and here I click on change to rename the computer or join a domain right now or by default it's a part of workgroup workgroup I just click on domain and type here ad labs dot local make sure that this is resolvable hmm. it seems that it's not getting resolved the domain controller for domain ad labs dot local could not be contacted maybe I'm not able to resolve it so open the command prompt do nslookup ad labs dot local and yes it's not resolving because the DNS server that I'm using is 205 infra dot labs which has not been configured for ad labs for ad labs this is dc1 so let me modify the network properties properties and the first DNS server should be 192.168.1.211 which is the IP address of DC1 second could be your 192.168.1.205 which is your infra and close it now if I try to resolve it resolution is fine let me try to join this machine to the domain edlabs.local now click on ok and it's able to contact the domain server and it's now asking me for the credentials administrator is the same username that was created at the time active directory or samba for domain was configured so the password that we provided here was edadmin at 123 I just <laughs> type the password and the username and pressed OK so it says welcome to the domain click on OK you must restart the computer that is fine I'll restart it now after we restart this Windows XP machine it will display you two options one is for the local machine login and other is for the domain login this is the same process whether you are making a Windows XP machine to be a part of this domain or it could be your Linux machine uh, sorry uh, or it could be your Windows 7 machine for Linux it will be a different part because we don't have such kind of menus so we may use likewise open but we'll have a separate lab for that just send it control all Dell now log on to here it displays AD labs and win XP password is AD admin at 123 and here I have successfully logged in into this desktop using the administrator credentials now the second question comes is how do you manage this samba for domain 
one option is you can use samba tool so this is the samba tool command line utility that is provided by samba that can be used to manage it other thing is if you want to make use of gui you need to install uh, windows server management tools or group and group management tools group policy management tools they can be installed on windows xp or windows 7 so now let me have a look into the group policies I just move to control panel or uh, can I see run yes so dsa.msc directory server administration and GP edit says group policy editor so here is where I can see the group policies enter full screen okay so previously we were talking about group policies so I would like to show you what the group policies are so these are the group policies we can see they could be attached to your computer configuration or to the user configuration if we are talking about computer configuration whether the softwares can be installed which softwares should be installed windows settings any kind of scripts at the startup or shutdown security settings for account policies password lockout po password account password policy account lockout policy when should account be locked for how much duration after how many failed login attempts password policy maximum password age 42 days after which it needs to be changed password must meet complexity requirement that's disabled as of now and force history so you can set these password policies over here IP security public key policies software restriction if you come to user configuration here you can see the windows settings over here so it's all that you can manage from the central location Internet Explorer properties so these are the group policies and the other part is active directory users and computers so here is a list of users Rajnesh Sival is the user that has already been added so I would like to add some other user or I can just mm, let me just delete it and add me uh, let's add a new user and the name is Rajnesh Sival username click on next the password so user must change login at the first logon this sh should be enabled so that user is forced to change the password user cannot change the password password never expires or account is disabled you can set them according to your wish but right now it's only the change of password that is required because this is a new user he needs access click on next finish close it log off to the guest machine send control all Dell 
and now we will be login logging into it using a regular user as you are okay password was wrong password has expired password has been changed so this is how I create users on this active directory and they can now log in into these machines so that's all for this video in the next video we are going to configure a Linux client to authenticate against this directory server thanks for viewing the video have a good day